Welcome to Nuked Radio. This is episode 15. Today is Friday, March 30th. And today is Fukushima Venting Day. We have Jules with us and Kurt from Irritate the State and Miss Milky the Clown. But we're having some temporary difficulties with our phone system. Miss Milky and I live in the same area and we actually have a crazy storm going on over here right now. In fact, there was just this huge flash of light right outside my window. For a second, I thought I was looking at the TEPCO cameras. Uh, someone posted on Radchick this morning that there were some flashes going on a couple hours ago. If any of you guys have the link for that feed, drop it into chat for us because I couldn't find it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Christina. <laughs> oh, we have some um, some interesting news. Japan is shaking quite a bit again. Last night there was a 5-1, 44 miles off the coast of the plant. There was also a 4-8 and a 4-6, a 4-5, and a 5-1 all along that fault. And then a few little ones north and south of there. So we'll drop a link to the USGS feed if you guys want to keep track of that this weekend. Any news you, is reporting? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, that's okay. I was just going to say, or you can go out to Fukushima Facts, Live Earth, and Sky Tools, and you have uh, all the quakes, the USGS link, the volcanoes, the sun stuff, the jet stream, all on one page. Yeah, the sun is another thing that we need to follow closely because that very, very active region, 1429, that gave us some trouble a few weeks ago is just turning around to face us again, and it looks like it's pretty active. There were a couple of flares yesterday, and I like Mr. Comet Watch on YouTube. There's also a Sky Watcher and Dr. Keith Strong, although I'm not sure, he sometimes seems like he's kind of downplaying the events, and um, something I thought was kind of interesting is he used to be the royal astronomer for the Queen of England. Mancini is reporting the highest radiation level yet, 37 times government limit, detected in river trout caught 40 kilometers from the meltdowns. And Mrs. Milky, you put out a video last night, and I watched it this morning. I wasn't sure that I understood correctly. Are one of the options of getting rid of the spent fuel at the reactors to reprocess it into more MOX fuel? Did I yeah. see that right? You saw it right. <laughs> it's just total insanity. I don't know what the Japanese are thinking anymore. Well, I think they have radiation sickness in the brain. They have to. I, I mean, it's just, I'm at a loss for words, really. Fukushima is reported by UPI at risk of a new meltdown level of cooling water is 29 feet lower than estimated, 29 feet lower than what TEPCO has been saying it was all along. And there's also a few stories posted. If you know anyone who lives in California, you may want to direct them to any news today. <clears throat> Southern California had 2,500 becquerels of iodine-131 found in seaweed, which is over 500% higher than other tests in the U.S. and Canada. But that's nothing compared to the seaweed that was found outside of the Fukushima reactors. One billion becquerels of iodine-131 found in seaweed there. And the ocean group that had come out at the beginning and made all these assumptions that the particles were going to sink and that everything would get diluted, now they're coming out and saying, well, we really didn't do a whole lot of testing. We were kind of just basing everything on theory. Yeah, they're just guessing. Everything that's happening right now is just one big scary guess. Did you Another... guys see the report with Nancy Nancy Grace um, back in the early days? It was like a week into it. I was looking for Sanjay Gupta stuff for Kevin Blanche, and I ran across a Nancy Grace 
um, interview where she said that California had declared a state of emergency. I remember that, actually. For the radiation plume? Yeah. And then it just, like, poof, went away. Nobody ever talked about it again. There there was some controversy over that when she first said that, that she was um, fear-mongering. And uh, then it just kind of got swept under the rug. Yeah, that just kind of blew me away when I ran across that. Uh, another study that was published today on any news, Fukushima radiation plume contacted North America at California with the greatest exposure in central and southern California. Projected paths of the radioactive atmospheric plume emanated from the Fukushima reactors best described as airborne particles or aerosols for 131, 137 cesium, and 35S. I don't know what that is. And subsequent atmospheric monitoring showed it coming in contact with the North American continent at California with greatest exposure in central and southern California. Government monitoring sites in Anaheim recorded peak airborne concentrations of 131 at 1.9 picocuries from a baseline of zero. So if you have anybody that's living in that area, you may want to forward some of these articles to them so they're aware of the exposure that they've had and the exposure that they are continuing to have. Also, I wanted to point out to you guys, if you're thinking about getting a Geiger counter, I noticed they've really dropped in price. The soaks that I have, microsieverts, it detects mostly cesium. Uh, I paid $176 with shipping I'm back in December, and they're 136 now. That's a great price. That's the cheapest I've heard of yet. Yeah, and it, it works really well. It's just not as rugged as I would like because I have a tendency to drop things like my phone, and I'm not sure how it would hold up under those conditions. And let's see what else we have going on here. There's a whole bunch of reactor problems being reported on the NRC's website today. Oconee in South Carolina had an off-site notification a sewage spill in the turbine building that discharges to the Kiowi River. And it looks like 100 gallons got out, at least that's what they're saying. doesn't say if any of that is radioactive. Browns Ferry in Alabama has an unanalyzed unanal condition with some of its equipment. Nine Mile Point in New York has a non-emergency, they lost their siren system. I don't know what's going on with all these plants and their sirens aren't working. This has happened a couple times at Fort Calhoun recently. Fitzpatrick in New York also had a loss of their tone alert system. So I guess when that happens, what they do is let the local law enforcement know. So if there was some type of situation at the plant, they would probably have to go to door to door. I would imagine they have some kind of contingency plan there. So we'll see if we can get our phone problems straightened out. And when we come back, we're going to hear from Hoodwinked by an Angel about how he feels about Fukushima from the 80-day mark. You're listening to Nuked Radio. Radiation, they tell you it's 200 times the normal limit. Today it's 200 times the normal limit. But it was 200 times the normal limit yesterday, and it'll be 200 times the normal limit tomorrow. So you didn't just get 200 times the normal limit, you got 600 times the normal limit. But I lied to you. I made the number low. You didn't get 600 times the normal limit. You got 1,600 times the normal limit yesterday if you lived in California, let's say. Or if you lived, excuse me, in Fukushima. If you lived in Fukushima, you might have got 14,000 times the normal limit. But you didn't get 14,000 times the normal limit for one day. You got it for the last 80 days. And have they figured out 
what the radiation is and fuck you proper Fukushima yet? No, they didn't figure it out because they don't give a fuck. They want you fucking dead. That's what they want. They want you fucking dead. They don't care how they kill you. The people in Fukushima, they're getting 16,000 times the radiation today and tomorrow and the day after. That's 48,000 times the radiation in three days. And it's going on now. Fuck. 80 in days. When are they going to start telling you what the numbers are? The, the radiation levels in the sea are more than 30,000 times the amount of radiation that's allowed. That's 30,000 times today and tomorrow. If you went swimming outside for proper, where they keep spraying hundreds and thousands of gallons of water on that clear power plant every fucking day, if you went out there, you'd be dead in a month. Are you starting to get the point that I'm trying to make here? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> That's Michael Fazio. Check out his YouTube channel, Hoodwinked by an Angel 1. Miss Milky found that clip for me. Um, just looking through the EPA graphs this morning, I'm going to read the following cities that are, that are near or above hazmat level. Fort Smith, Arkansas. Little Rock also had a bit of a spike. It looks like it's about 150. Phoenix, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona. Yuma, Arizona. Bakersfield is near 300, but not uh, nearly as high as it's been in the past, where it's gone over 1,000 CPMs several times in the last two months. I dropped the link into chat if you guys want to look at these yourself. Los Angeles is down. Sacramento is offline. San Diego's down, San Francisco's down, San Jose is blank, Colorado Springs is blank. Denver had a spike, uh, looks like about five days ago. Grand Junction, Colorado is down. Hartford, Connecticut is offline. Washington, D.C. is low. Des Moines, Iowa, looks like they pulled that offline too. Idaho Falls, Idaho is about 500 in the last two days. Chicago's blank. Fort Wayne, Indiana is just above hazmat in the last two days. Kansas City's blank. <clears throat> Wichita's low. Lexington is blank. Louisville is also high. And boy, there's a lot of these graphs offline. None of the ones in Michigan are working. The only one is Grand Rapids, and it's always low. Ms. Milky, did you know we have a research reactor at U of M? No. Yeah, I just found that out the other day. Yeah, they have one at UB, too, University in, of Buffalo. In addition, when you hear that we have 104 reactors in the U.S., that's not including the 25 or so that are at colleges. And a lot of times the uh, nuclear physics building is like right next to the football stadium springfield missouri was really high last weekend that's when potter blog was getting 17 times background in the rain and billings is offline charlotte looks like it's turned way down as well as willing wilmington carolina bismarck is high kearney nebraska is high lincoln nebraska is high Omaha, Nebraska is high. The jet stream is kind of hovering around the northern states right now. It has been for a few weeks. Uh, Albuquerque looks like it's spiking a bit again. Carlsbad, Navajo Lake, and Las Vegas are all offline. Reno is offline. Jules, what have your what has your machine been reading in the last couple of weeks? Because I know you were getting spikes last weekend too. Yeah, this whole week, actually, it's been um, up and down. You know, I mean, if I look at my graphs, it there's been no rhyme or reason to it. Um, it'll be up for two, three hits, and then it'll be way down, and then it'll be up. But we're talking, you know, a max of like 18 or 20, so it's not super high. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's a zigzag. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention, just going back to the research reactors at the university, 
Yeah. Um, about 20, 25 years ago, I had, I think I was telling you about my investigation into the leaking reactor at the University of Buffalo with my nasty phone call telling me to either drop it or something bad would happen to me. Um, one of the things that I discovered is that at these research uh, reactors, they are not under the guise of the NRC. So any um, leaks, any radioactive waste, at least here in New York State, is the responsibility of the state because it is on state university land. There is no federal intervention. Well, you know, they're also responsible for their own security. And ABC News did a uh, story, like an undercover story, back in 2005, where they went around and they visited a bunch of these reactors, and there's no security. You can walk in there. They don't check your ID. They don't check your backpacks. And so after ABC News um, put this story out, the response from the university from the universities were, if we have to provide security, then we're going to have to close down the program because we can't afford it. And nothing was ever done. There still isn't any security there. That's crazy. Pierre, South Dakota is really high. It looks like it's about 500. Uh, Rapid City, the graphs are down. Knoxville's down. Memphis is down. Nashville is down. Amarillo, they took it off. And, you know, Texas has like seven or eight of these graphs, and only two of them are working. And they're like these really tiny little bumps, which I know should not be looking that way because the jet stream actually moved down through Texas in the early part of this week. San Angelo, looks like that graph might be working, and it's right at 300. Harrisburg, Virginia, what is going on over there? They get some really big spikes. It's like within the last week they were up near 500. And Washington State, the only one that's working is Spokane, and they had a little bit of a spike. So that's where we're at with the graphs. I haven't uh, checked the last couple of days because I'm running out of batteries. That's the only thing about these Geyer counters. Man, do they burn through the batteries fast. <laughs> Jules, do you have yours hooked up right to your computer? My Strong phone power? or my... No, my, your Geyer uh, counter. No, my Geiger counter is on 9 volt, um, but the 9 volt lasted about 8 months, and that was 24-7. Oh, okay. Mine takes, like, double A's, and it goes through them in about 3 days. Jesus. We'll be back with Nukes Radio. It's not the way you kiss that tears me apart. The nuclear fissionable materials that are coming out of Fukushima are thousands and thousands and thousands of times more powerful than what happened in Chernobyl. Plus, the nuclear core, in all likelihood, all three of them melted down into the groundwater, which makes it 4,000 to 5,000 or 10,000 times more powerful than Chernobyl, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what the IAEA and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and this freaking animal in the White House, blow bomber, this lion bastard, <laughs> illegal immigrant that we have in the White House is not telling the American people. Ladies and gentlemen, really pissed off today about this, ladies and gentlemen. Look at what they have done to this beautiful world that we live in. In a in hundred years, there won't be any life anywhere in America, so to speak, as we know of it now. And it'll be in small, gated communities, in large concrete buildings, because the world will be a nuclear holocaust on steroids because of Chernobyl and because of Fukushima and any other disaster that we have that wipes out the ability to maintain these nuclear power plants. We could have one, two, or ten Fukushimas in America in a matter of hours if we have any one problem, a nuclear bomb, so to speak, 
dropped in a major city and three or four reactors would go offline and melt down and melt through into the water table. See, this is what they're not telling you. Nuclear power was never maintainable. They knew they could never get rid of the nuclear waste. They knew that when they started. They lied to you and said that they would be able to get rid of the nuclear waste, but they never could get rid of the nuclear waste, and they knew they would never be able to get rid of the nuclear waste. The nuclear waste is building up to a point where it can't be maintained, and it has to be maintained for 50,000 years. Who's going to maintain this underground stockpile of nuclear waste and pellets and fissionable materials for 50,000 years? They can't even maintain one nuclear power plant. One catastrophe is destroying the populace of the planet Earth, and we have tens of thousands of times that much nuclear material in the ground, in concrete, in bitumes entombed in concrete and the concrete is dissipating some of it's already turned into dust and we can't replace it because we can't get back into the salt mines to replace the concrete so ladies and gentlemen nuclear fissionable materials is how are they going to wipe out the populace of this planet just like they did in the incan societies and the mayan societies via one methodology or the other today's methodology of choice is nuclear cat radiological catastrophe because we are in the age of nuclear radiological catastrophes one after the other after the other after the other it'll be a cascading event it'll wipe out 93 percent of this world's population and this is my hypothesis and this is what i believe to be the case ladies and gentlemen again that's michael fazio so, do we have Shane with us? Here, here, here. Hi, Shane. How are you, yeah, Christine? Good. Tell us what part of the country you live in again. Well, I'm over here in the Chicago area, okay? All right. So, um, did you want to vent today, or you just want to share some thoughts with us? Yeah, I really appreciate the offer for letting me share some thoughts out there, because there's just so much insanity going on. I'd just like to throw a little something out there to people to let them know to maybe just think a different way because uh, things have happened in my life here that are always stuck in my brain and they stick in there for a reason. And, uh, and the story goes like this. My friend's dad, which I always respect elders, was telling us when he was a kid growing up in the city. And he... Uh, he was telling us how back, like, in the late 30s and the 40s out in the southwest suburbs, there was a uh, military installation. You know, we got a major road and forest preserves out there. Now it's all open to the public. But back then, you could not get anywhere near it. It's a place called Redgate Woods. And this place, from what he told us, was you go over there and you go in the woods, and there's all kind of old buildings and foundations down there out in the middle of the woods, and he goes, that's where they were developing the atomic power stuff, you know, with uh, Oppenheimer and Fermi and all them guys. And uh, this was back in the mid-'80s when me and my buddy just started driving. And uh, we were just like, hey, you pulling our legs? You know, so all right, let's go see if the old man's pulling our legs. Well, we go out there. We go to this place called Red Gate Woods. And we go walking, humping way out in the back of these woods back there. And sure as all get out. We see foundations everywhere. We see fences with uh, Bob wire and all the trees growing through it and everything. And then we come to this one area. It's a big clearing through the woods. And there's this huge stone, big marble stone like a, uh, you know, marble, just like a uh, tombstone, okay? And then uh, about 10 feet tall. And like a big boulder, and one side's all machine flat, just like a tombstone, and had this whole writing on it, kind of like a Georgia Guidestone deal, just giving you the history of this area. And for the long and the short of it, it says this is where they first started developing uh, nuclear power and things like that. And uh, yeah, 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 woo, 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 hee, 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 all the info going on. And at the end, it says, and then behind you, in the clearing behind you, in these six, there's six boulders in this clearing behind you, and it says, do not dig here because all the rads that were manifested here and generated here are buried in the ground here. Do not dig there. At that point, me and my buddy looked white as a ghost at each other. We turned around, sure as all heck, there's these six stones in this big, huge clearing in a big mound. You can, you can just see that it was uh, a dump site, 
And we were just, all of a sudden, a wave of fear went through us. We're like, dude, we're dead. Let's get out of here. And what I think is important for me coming from Illinois is because there's a lot of history here. There's a lot of history at the inception. Like I say, just a couple miles down the road is... Uh, the Argonne National Laboratories, and they have a collider under there. It's a big mile-by-mile, mile, you know, installation over there. And they had just shut that down this year, and they're saying because uh, they got the bigger one out in France or wherever that is. But uh, I don't know about that. And then up in the northwest suburbs, I think in Batavia, I think there's a Fermi lab up there somewhere, and I heard that they have a collider up there too. But also, back when they were developing all this stuff, that's the, the, the history of it was that the University of Chicago or Illinois, one of the ones that are right there, right by the lake, is where Fermi and Oppenheimer and all them guys did their first experiment under the bleachers uh, in one of the uh, gymnasiums of, of, of nuclear fusion or fission, whatever one it was, you know. And they basically built a ramshackle thing, lined it with bricks. I don't even think there was like a lot of lead and everything. And they were going to do the first experiment to make fusion or fission, whatever it was. Yeah, and, it's called the Chicago Pile. It was the, wor the world's first man-made nuclear reactor. And it correct. was built on Rackett's Court correct. under the abandoned west stands of the original Alonzo Stagg Field Stadium at the University right. of Chicago. It was the first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction, and it was initiated on December 2nd of 1942. Correct. And it it's actually a national historic landmark now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could go right there. they got a big monument right there, and there's, there's nothing around it, but they show the exact spot where it is. But right before they blew the switch, threw the switch, they both looked at each other, and they're like, guys, should we do this? Because we really don't know what's going to happen. So that, that, that's pretty wild. But what I heard, getting back to that Red Gate Woods deal, and then me and my buddy were just walking around somewhere, and there's perfectly circular ponds. I mean, perfectly circular. Grabbed a big old dead stick, big old tree. It was at least 10 feet long right at the edge of it. And I'm putting this, this stick down 10 feet long right at the edge of this circular pond. And it just went straight down like it's a cylinder. So I'm thinking, boy, this is like one of the cooling ponds. And then uh, in the mid-90s or early 90s, I heard that they came out there and uh, abated it all and took it all out of there. But uh, the only thing I want to say to all of this is I'm sure if they dumped it there, I'm sure they didn't do it the right way. They dumped it and got the, got the WTF out of there. You know what I'm saying? So... And me and my buddy are looking around, and all of a sudden I just started calming down, and I'm like, well, all the animal life looks okay. All the trees look okay. Everything that's growing, everything looks fine and dandy. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I know that is probably bad for our body. There is no doubt about it. But just the same, we are powerful, powerful entities, and our bodies are just unbelievable compensating organisms. And along with knowing that, in keeping your mind strong and solid in you know doing all your detoxins and this that and the other i think we can all get through this because back in the 50s nasa sent some big rocket up there and shot barium or it blew up or something we all have radiation in us from that then there was all the 300 above ground tests in uh nevada or whatever and you know we're all west of that i mean east of that and so you know we're all downwind from that so We've been bathing in this stuff forever. Then there was Chernobyl. So, I mean, I don't know. I think if we live in, in love and not fear, I think we'll get all through this one way or another. You know, so that, that's really just all I wanted to throw out there because every time I go by that place, Red Gate Woods, I always stop and I think of all the souls that were lost in Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima. And I always send good energy. Hey, Shane, go ahead and finish uh, your thought because you got cut off at the break. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. I can't hear the music coming in, and I am a big old windbag here. But uh, as I was saying, if anyone could pick the story up, uh, like I say, there's a big major arter arterial road that goes through there now. And every time I go by that road there where they, you know, first did all of this stuff, you know, the inception of this insanity, um, I always just, I just, I just ponder, I meditate, and I just try to give, all the positive energy in the world in you know the cleansing of everything from the earth to all the people that were vaporized in japan because 
some of them souls probably don't even know that they were vaporized. You know, just like you look at the pictures and you just see nothing but a shadow of where someone was. I mean, it just it just turns me inside out. And, you know, who knows? Maybe their souls are just walking around and they don't even know what happened. And I think that I'm here walking around. And if I got some energy that's in me, I always just try to, you know, um, and uh, just, you know, try to release their souls or, you know, forgive us, forgive them, forgive us land, work with us and try to, on my little behalf here, I try to just, you know, make, make amends for what we have uh, let out of Pandora's box. So thanks that's for what I got. sharing. Thanks for sharing that. And, and I feel um, much the same as you do. There's so much of this is out of our control, but what we can control is how we react to it and how we treat others. And part of that is sharing and caring concerns for our, our fellow man and alerting them to this situation so they can deal with it too. Um, I understand that we have Michael Fazio on the line. Hi, Michael. Uh, good afternoon, ladies. And uh, that's an interesting sh story, Shane. Thanks for sharing that with us. So um, you've been pretty outspoken <clears throat> about Obama recently. Okay. Well, for the people that don't understand the reasoning why I'm so outspoken, I can assure you that I have done quite a bit of research, it, it, much beyond the research that's possible to do with Fukushima. And in my studies during the course of writing a book, I discovered what everybody has come to be known as pictographs on the one dollar bill and i have published a book called angels on the ark by michael fazio and in this book i have postulated that the that there is a pictograph of a nuclear detonation over the eagle's head on the one dollar bill and that this pictograph is part of a series of pictographs that date back not hundreds of years, and certainly not from the year 1934, but I believe that these pictographs are a story in pictures, or, or glyphs, if you would call them, similar to that of the Rosetta Stone and the hieroglyphs at the Great Pyramid. And I believe that they put these on the $1 bill to tell the story of our civilization. And this is documented in my book, that during the course of my discoveries, I believed that they were going to destroy this world with nuclear fissionable type materials and radiological catastrophes. And when I did my research into this, this field of nuclear physics, so to speak, I discovered that they never, they never believed, never from day one, when they started building nuclear power plants, they never believed that they would ever come to a methodology in which to alleviate the waste and they knew exactly by how many nuclear power plants when when the radiological wastes themselves would reach a point where there was too much of it to store in the salt mines and in underground tombs and that they also knew that these tombs would have to be maintained for not hundreds or tens of thousands of years, but in some cases, 50 to 100,000 years. And this is, this is stuff that the United States government and all the governments of the world have known since the 1940s when they started doing this. So I believe that they knew that this was going to occur, and they're using this these catastrophes as a methodology in which to institute what Shane might call, a, well, what I call Agenda 21, but in fact, the depopulation of the planet Earth, because there's nothing that you can do about the amount of radi radiological material that's stored, and they can't maintain servicing the entombed radiological particles. They can't do it. I mean, they can't maintain one nuclear power plant, a.k.a. Fukushima. It's just not possible. It, it, would be, it, it could be thousands of years with today's technology before they can get those, if the cores went, did do a melt-through, if I say, did do a melt-through. But the point is, they, it's 25 years for Chernobyl, and Chernobyl had 
we're going to use round numbers, but Chernobyl had 20 metric tons or thereabout of fissionable materials in that reactor. At Fukushima, we had 123,000 metric tons uh-huh. of fissionable materials and and the storage f- containers that were in them. And when the explosion occurred, they got blown up into the atmosphere and into particles the size of a 38 caliber bullet. And that there's no way <clears throat> for them to retrieve the pellets or the particles, so they just placed dirt on top of it, which means that for 10,000 years, or these particles will be part of the soil and through through the um, through the permeation of water through the soil these particles will wash down into the seas and this is a cumulative so that's my theory but I have done the research to know that they can't they can't stop this event from taking place and they're not telling us the truth because I own a barge and crane company at one point, and the pumps that they were using to put water on the plants themselves were upwards of 300,000 or 3 million gallons a day of water were pumped into those buildings, and none of it was stored, and all of it went into the sea. So when they say 17 tons, which is 17 cubic yards, basically, of water leaked into the ocean. They forgot to tell you about the 3 million gallons of water a day from each one of those fire pump trucks that were pumped over the reactors to cool them off. And and my best estimate was 20, uh, uh, 2 billion gallons, excuse me, not 20, but 2 billion gallons of water became radioactive. And they never mentioned that. So I, I know that I'm a long, little bit more long-winded than most, and that's my theory. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to discuss this with you. Thank you. No, you, you bring up a couple good points. Um, one is, now that we know that the suppression chamber under Reactor 2 has been destroyed, all the water that they have been dumping on that reactor has been going into the cracks in the ground, they didn't even know. They expected there to be, you know, 20, 29 feet more because uh, th- those reactors are huge. They're actually some of the largest reactors in the world. And that site has more spent fuel in this facility than any other place in the world, too. I mean, if you were going to take out a plant, that would be the one to take out. And you can't, you can't help but see some of the, the conspiracies that have been proposed. In fact, we're going to have Lauren Murray on next week. She's actually found a correlation between some of Obama's, uh, the Secretary of Energy, the guy that was appointed, Stephen Chu, and this other guy, Dr. Stephen Coonan, who was a BP scientist. His specialty was oceans. Those two are taking orders from the city of London, according to her. And she's actually mapped this out in meticulous detail and you can find that interview on exopolitics youtube channel i'm going to watch it this weekend before we talk to her but you bring up chernobyl too a lot of people don't know this but that sarcophagus is ready to collapse in fact they knew that 10 years ago and all the fuel that's still left in that facility is now turning to dust so if that roof ever caves in you know the hundreds of tons of concrete is going to fall on that and throw up a radioactive dust cloud that is just going to be huge. And Russia has been asking for money from other countries to redo that roof for 10 years, and they haven't been able to raise the funds. Nobody will help them. We're too busy building bombs. We're too busy spreading democracy and, and causing birth defects and all the children and the countries that we bomb. I mean, you know, where are the priorities here? They just, they don't care about the people at all. There's no protection. Everything's covered up. And it's just disgusting. And I'm, I'm really glad that there's people like you, Michael, that really speak their mind on this issue. Because well, we need more people to stand up and say, look, this is what's going on. And you better wake up to this. This is exactly... You are the, exactly what you just said, that they won't alleviate the money for the Russian nuclear power plant, knowing how catastrophic the event could be. 
And this is why I believe it is the planned annihilation of the species and that this has occurred in many different times throughout the history of this civilization. Thanks so much for coming on today. I also want to thank Jules for being here with me every day and Kurt for helping us out with our clips and JJ from yesterday. Um, Miss Milky. Miss Milky, thank you for being here. And Shane. Also next, and Shane, Hi. next week we'll have Lauren Murray and Matt Stein who wrote an article called 400 Chernobyls about sun flares. We'll be bringing him on. So come back and listen and we'll get our phones fixed in the meantime.